Oh, hey everyone, check out my brand new car. Eurogamer decided to finally start paying me what I am worth. So I popped on over to Auto Trader with my latest paycheck and picked up this little beauty. Obviously, I'm, I'm not made of money, so I had to get it second hand, but it's, it's basically brand new, apart from a, a, a really weird stain on the, on the passenger seat, that is. Ooh, is that is that glue? I don't really know. So anyway, I'm Eurogamers Ian Higton, and I recently got to go hands-on with a short demo of Ubisoft's upcoming racing game, Forza Horizon 6. Oh, uh, sorry, I, I mean I mean the Crew Motor Fest, a game which is definitely not Forza Horizon 6 at all, but it basically might as well be considering the amount of homework copying going on. Anyway, it's time to buckle up, buttercups, because I'm about to pelt you with seven things that you need to know about the Crew Motor Fest, starting with the open world. Now, considering the Crew Motor Fest is selling itself as an open world racing game, it seems a bit strange to me that we, and by we I mean the people playing the demo, weren't actually allowed to try out the open world aspect of the game. Like, none of it. At all. Especially as the game is set in the beautiful island of Oahu, which is part of the Hawaiian archipelago. Instead, we were put straight into a playable introductory montage that featured multiple different vehicles to drive, which definitely wasn't like the Forza Horizon introductory vehicle montages at all, honest. And then we were given the chance to drive our way through a couple of races from the Made in Japan playlist. This playlist that focused on Japanese-inspired street racing is one of the five available playlists that we got a taste of during that introductory montage. The other playlists featured in this introductory montage were Off-Road Addict, which showed off some of Oahu's lovely scenery and a bunch of fancy jumps. There was the Motorsports playlist, which was one for the pros, and that featured high-end race cars and a slightly more focused racing experience. Then there was the Vintage Garage playlist, which gives you a chance to race classic cars and features old-school music and ye olde timey video filters. And finally, there was the Legendary playlist, that showed off the kind of fancy, souped-up sports cars that you could only dream of owning. Unless you're me, of course. Oh, look at my car. But look, I'm not one to be constrained by rules and regulations. And in fact, if you tell me I'm not allowed to do something, that's just going to make me want to do that thing even more. So I decided to see how open the world of the Crew Motor Fest was when you're locked inside an actual race. Was it possible to make my Lambo go blambo by driving off-road and into the sea, or was I set to be less Dora the Explorer and more keep your foot on the flora? Well, let's find out. Okay, so as you can see, it was possible for me to go off the beaten track for a short while, but thanks to the out-of-bounds warnings and the eventual track resetting, exploring the open world of Oahu is something that I'll have to do at a later date. Still, at least the water looks nice up close, eh? Tokyo isn't even real! As I mentioned before, the Crew Motor Fest takes place on an island in Hawaii, which is where eager race fans have just set up a brand new Horizon Festival. Oh wait, sorry, no, sorry. It's called a Motor Fest, my mistake. So anyway, with this in mind, you're probably wondering how and why there's all of this gameplay footage of me Tokyo drifting around a racetrack that looks very much like it's come straight out of Shinjuku, which is geographically quite far away from Hawaii. Well, according to the in-game lore, yes, there's a whole story here, but I'll, I'll touch on that later, 
Parts of Oahu have been built up in order to resemble the streets of Tokyo as much as possible. Basically, they've created a Tokifo, if you will. So anyway, as I'd already leaned into driving like an a-hole, I figured why not test out exactly how well the residents of Oahu have recreated Tokyo by straight up just crashing into a shop so I could get a look at what was for sale inside. And yes, despite the Shinjuku-style facades on the front, these shops not only have their signs written in English, but they're also selling stuff in American dollars, so it's definitely Hawaii. And look, it's only $1.99 for some tomatoes. That's pretty reasonable in today's cost of living crisis, if you ask me. Re-eat-wind. One of the main problems with doing a preview of a racing game like this when you're not a racing game enthusiast is how do you make your preview interesting when A, you know nothing about cars, B, you've only got about 20 minutes to get to grips with the game before you boot it off, and C, everyone else is basically going to have the same footage as you because how different really can set races be? Well, as you've probably already guessed from my previous points, I decided the best thing to do was to drive like an a-hole and ruin the days of as many AI races as possible. Doing this, however, led to me playing the game like I play Mario Kart, which basically means I forgot that there was a brake button. Thankfully, just like in most other racing games, and not just in Forza Horizon, honest, the Crew Motor Fest does have a rewind feature that lets you erase your mistakes and get back on track after a nasty collision. And that means you can drive like a complete and utter a-hole and suffer virtually zero penalties. Look, here's a little rewind montage so you can see how that works. becomes your playground. Total freedom becomes your creed. fours, pickups, quads, you're given every chance to go off the beaten path. Indestructible cars! like it never happened. Despite my insistence on driving around Oahu like a coked up clown on an absinthe bender, some of you may have noticed that the vehicles that I've been driving have suffered no damage at all. You'd think, what with all the barriers I've hit and all the cars that I rammed into, that there'd be at least a little scuff of the paintwork or something, but as far as I can tell, all of the cars in the game are indestructible, no matter how much of an a-hole you attempt to be. If you like to see expensive sports cars fall apart, and if you like to bask in the beauty of a beat-up motorbike, you, my friends, have some disappointing times on the road ahead of you, because no matter how much you punish them, the cars in the Crew Motor Fest stay pristine at all times. Which, to be fair, means your insurance premiums will stay pretty low. So, 
every cloud and all that? Oh my god, just please won't you shut up? Fest asked us to show you how it's done, but we don't do free tours here. You gotta play your part and give us a bit of a challenge. No pressure at all. Yeah, don't scare the kid, brother. One thing you might have noticed from my gameplay is the amount of nonsense spouted by random NPCs while you're trying to concentrate on driving. Honestly, it's like having a bunch of annoying toddlers nattering away in the backseat of your car, constantly chatting drivel while you try to get the ungrateful little shits to a butlins or whatever. I presume these voices belong to people who we'll meet in whatever story this game has, but holy crap, the gibberish coming out of the mouths of these people is enough to put me right off my drifting. I get that it's nice to have a bit of narrative here to tie all the events together and everything, but I so hope there is a way to mute this stuff all together. Honestly, I have to listen to myself talk all day long, so my ears are already full of way too much cringe as it is. I definitely don't have space in there for wacky conversations like this. By the way, do you know what NSX stands for? New sports car experimental. I wasn't asking you, Hina. Listen, you two, if you don't shut the hell up, I'm turning this street racing car around right now and we are going home. No butlins, no sticks of rock, no nothing. A vehicle handling. Quack. If you're a hardcore racing sim junkie, the Crew Motorfest may not be the game for you, as the style of most of the races and events here seem to be tailored way more towards the arcadey side of things. In terms of handling, this means you can throw the cars around and do cool things like drifting and massive suspension destroying jumps without real world consequences like the high risk of death standing in your way. From the short amount of time I played the motorsports playlist, it's safe to say that this is the one that enthusiasts should steer towards, get it? But still, the handling and the gameplay here is simple and easy enough for anyone to pick up and enjoy. Basically, if you think of a game like Forza Horizon, which this game is nothing like honestly, then you've got a good idea of the way that the cars here will handle. Making the call when to go for the pit stop, checking on your rivals, it gets intense. The best, it seems, is yet to come. Probably. <laughs> now, I know I've been a little bit silly with this video, but in all honesty, I did enjoy my time playing Forza Horizon 6. I, I mean, the Crew Motor Festival. It's just the right side of arcadey to be a racing game that I'd find fun rather than frustrating, and it does look rather nice too. But the demo I played was still a bit of a letdown. It was short, I couldn't go open world and explore properly, and because of that it kind of feels like I wasn't able to experience the really good stuff that the game has to offer. There was this reward video that I unlocked at the end of my session that teased things like monster trucks and American pop culture cars like the DeLorean and out of all the playlists that I tried in the introductory montage, the off-road one was my favourite, so it's a shame then that I couldn't give it a proper go with some full-length races like I could with the Made in Japan tracks. So while this preview was fine and it's given me a good idea of what to expect from the full game, it does feel like the really good stuff from the Crew Motorfest was kept locked away for another day. Oh, and one last thing, just before I went hands-on with the demo, I got to see a presentation for the game which was hosted by one of the developers. That developer, and I'm sorry I don't remember their name as it all went past very quickly and I didn't make any notes, uh, they had a French accent that made the word Motorfest sound like Murderfest. And honestly, Ubisoft, if you're out there watching this video, the Crew Murderfest is one, a much better name for a game than Motorfest, and two, the Crew Murderfest is 100% the game that you lot should be making after this one. A taste of an age where there was no nitro to boost you and no GPS to guide you. It feels strangely comforting. 
And that is your lot, friends. So far, the Crew Murder Fest, sorry, Motor Fest, feels like a decent arcade racer that will be accessible to all players, no matter their racing skills. And if you've always wanted to give a game like Forza Horizon a spin, but don't have an Xbox or a PC, well, then this seems like it'll be the next best thing. And with that, there is nothing left for me to do except for to ask you lot to kindly like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to Eurogamer for almost daily videos about video games, and perhaps check out some of these other videos that are on screen and clickable right now while I take my brand new car out for a spin. Goodbye! What the... what the hell? I was told this car had been given a full service! Why won't it start? Oh my god, I've been ripped off again, haven't I? Goddamn bloody auto trader, what the...